What's happening, gamers? Welcome back to Common Rider Bat Ride War 3 Genesis. That was a long name. It's a way too long name. I bet it's harder to say in Japanese. Time for Ryuki Mirror World. That's what Ryuki does. All right, so I want to play as Force. Yay! Kamen Rider Force. But time out. Harasete mo rasa. Whatever. Whatever. Force. Force is it. Force is it. Force. <laughs> You must pronounce everything the Japanese way. No, we're gonna say fours for this because we like saying fours. We're gonna we're gonna bring in Cheerios. Yeah. O's. O's. Oh. Oh yeah, you watched a movie with these people, and uh, I watched it, but I fell asleep within two seconds. That's because uh, fours was the show that uh, replaced O's. Oh, okay, cool. So. Oh. Ready. Yep. Looks like your space is awesome! <laughs> Yay! Let's do this mano a mano. Mano a mano. It's right. I mean, you know, mano a mano. Okay, there he is. Man to man. She's coughing at me. Oh, he coughed at me. Oops. Yeah, what they said. So, Force is one of Kaming's favorites. Yep, if I have to rate my riders, it would be Black, probably Fours. <gasps> Number yep. two? Oh my yep. gosh. Drive. Wow. Uh, possibly Decade. And Double. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, Double. What about Wizard? Wizard would be number six. Wow. Yeah, Wizard is awesome. And then probably five, five, five or fives. And uh, let's see, maybe Kuga. And people are still waiting to see Gaim. Fire states. Yeah, I like the firepower. It's really awesome. Don't you dare! Don't. Hmm. Mirror world. Oh no, he didn't. He just had to do that. I'm not a fan of the mirror, mirror world. Nobody is. It's a coward's realm. It's right. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying there. Shinji, get back here and fight like a man. All right, so Forrest is awesome. If you don't know what the show is like, it's really fun. We've been watching it. It's kind of like the uh, the Breakfast Club. <laughs> don't mind me. I'm just zapping bugs. Okay. And, um, yeah. I don't know, I don't know if Kaywin caught what I just said. Breakfast Club. Yeah, it's, uh, basically it's a bunch of teenagers. He's a teenager. And it's a bunch of teenagers, and they are from all different walks of life, and they're able to find, like, a happy place that they can understand each other. Even though that place is called high school. Yeah. I know. It's totally unrealistic, but amazing. I would say that 4 is, like, I mean, I like the comedy aspect of it, and I also like that the show has a lot of heart. Yeah, and um, he cries for people. But originally, I, I, when I looked, I was one of those people that based Fours on his appearance before ever seeing his show. So I saw him in Team Ups, I saw that he was kind of goofy, but I never actually sat down to watch more than one episode of a series. I see, so you're just like one of those terrible teachers that judged him and thought he couldn't do anything when he's really a superhero. Yeah, I judged Genny before I even knew him. Genny! Well, yeah, I kind of forgot his full name, but I know people call him Gen Gintaro. Gintaro, okay. Yeah, I mean, there's some really cool characters in the show, and, uh, oh, their base is on the moon! Which I think we you already said that before, but... Uh, I don't know really, if you said that in another episode, I can't remember. Might have. But it's really cool, like, I don't know, am I allowed to say everything about it, or is this spoilers? Well, I mean, I, I have to play, you're just my plucky sidekick. So. I'm the plucky sidekick. So basically, there's like a, a goth girl, um, a cheerleader, a jock. Decade! Oh, sorry, I'll wait for Decade. Decade wants so. to wash his hands of us. Now you get the SmackDown said decade. Amazing. He did say. So yeah, I would have to say Force is one of my favorites. Wow. Uh, I cannot wait. We're probably going to be watching more today and later. 
Um, I really, I liked dry, but fours, it just like made me smile so much. I would say fours is good for people that it, really enjoy anime and like. It makes you so happy. It is so feel good. Well, there there are some episodes. I mean, there that are some feel good, and there are some episodes where it actually like deals with like you know things that people have to go through in high school and like being misunderstood and having people reject you and stuff like that. So it's actually like a really good like if you're in high school and or if you had horrible experiences in high school that would be like everyone on the planet mm-hmm. then you could relate to the show which is awesome. No offense decade but your show is kind of boring <laughs> these days. It's all the same stuff. You go to a rider planet and what decade's cool. Decade is cool but after yeah, Forza, seeing other shows like Forza, Forza show and other things like that. I really like, like Forza because yeah, like I said, it's like it's like after after the whatever Girl episode, Buffett. after they had about five or six characters, I was like, this is like the Breakfast Club because they're like we all we all have a place here. We're in the Common Writer Club, except for some people don't like to call it that way, but he likes it to be called the Common Writer Club. Well, there's one guy who does not like the idea of all the um, characters, you know, hanging out in his spaceship type thing. Yeah, but he he tends to open up to people after he gets trapped on the moon for a couple episodes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that guy. Yep. I forgot well, what his... dad, his dad created the uh, Fours thing. The one thing that I really like about the series, too, is how it combines to the Common Rider universe. Like, the reason he gets the name Common Rider Forza is from the goth girl who shows them a YouTube video of different Common Riders in the world. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, which okay. shows him that he's in the same world as Common Rider Black, Ichigo, Kuga, and it, I don't think it was Decade. I think it was Super One or something like that. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. You said he was in the same world as Black. Yeah. And then they basically confirm that in the movie he's in the same world as O's and Double as well. So oh, we're all okay. one big happy world. So anyway, he the character actually does remind me of K Wing a little bit because. I mean, I know Kate Wing had a little trouble in school, like, and stuff like that, but it's... I wasn't a delinquent, though. You weren't a delinquent, though. But Forrest has trouble with school, but his heart is so great, and he has so many other things that he's so great at, that... Ultimate like, space! I don't know. If there's something about, like, when you have trouble with stuff that makes people relate to you more, and you're able to help everybody. Stop doing that! But, uh, yeah. Mm. Aww. He wasted my special But yeah, ability. I mean, uh, he has such a big heart that he actually cries for a jock person one time. He cries for everybody. He actually, okay, this is, if you want to get to know Force, what he's like, he's really tall. He has a hairstyle that basically is like he's trying to be Elvis, think but it's like a Japanese hairstyle that... No, the best like, way to explain his hairstyle it. is think about the character, which you wouldn't know about. But those of you that have seen Yu Yu Hagasho... The guy with the red hair and that weird foofy do, that is who basically Gintaro is based after. So that very um, manga juvenile delinquent style. He even wears like the same like um, outfit. Doesn't wear the school uniform. So he has that like very, you know, I'm a bad boy. Because that's what they encompass as being a bad boy. Oh, yeah, there's a teacher that keep call, uh, keeps calling him a bad boy and things like that. But basically, okay, think of, like, Forrest as, like, okay, he's always... Ah, no. He is... Okay. He is always misunderstood. He's always... People always look down on him and, act, and don't think he can do as much as he can do. And he's always uh, basically defying their expectations. Because, you That's know. what makes a true superhero. Yeah, and basically, like, people put him in category and think that he's a certain way uh, and think, like, oh, you can do nothing but be a juvenile delinquent. And then he'll be like, oh, actually, I'm sorry, I'm late for a common writer club. I have to go save the world. And people will be like, what? And so it's basically, like, people are always putting him into, like, a box and acting like, oh, you know, you're just a juvenile delinquent. This is all you can do and this is all you'll ever be. And he's totally defined everything and he makes friends like he's basically a guy that he doesn't fit into school like when you in first when he first appears on the scene he doesn't he 
doesn't get the rules of high school, right. and which makes him awesome. What's That's re- why he's so cool. What's really cool about the show, too, is the kids get together to help develop a, a thing called Switches, and there are 40 Switches in all to represent the 40 years of the Common Rider series. So each episode, or two-parter, he gets a new Switch that he gets to test, either in space or whatever, and the guy whose father developed the Switches is always getting on Gintaro's case that he won't be able to, you know, master these switches. Some of these switches need to be thrown away. And even with the switches, he still doesn't give up. He's like, nope, I'm going to find a use for this even though it's not working out the way it should. So he's very optimistic about things. There are some writers that are like that, but... There are also some writers that are easily, they give up and stuff. Yeah, Boris's uh, superpower is in his heart, if you think about it. He's a little Naruto-like. He's extremely optimistic. He never backs down. He will be just like Naruto is Sasuke's friend no matter what. He will be friends with anyone, especially the people that hate him. Except that guy. He doesn't want to be friends with him because he keeps retreating. And the bad guys who are extremely evil, but he literally will be friends with anyone, and he will make them be his friends. And he says that was like a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. When Amber gets really excited about a show, she likes to talk a lot, which she really enjoys the show. I really enjoy Forrest so. a lot. I'm just trying to just say what I think about him, why he's so cool. You guys should really check out the show. Yeah, really I mean, I in terms of like, because people have been asking us like, what kind of common writer show should you check out and things like that. If you guys are in high school or college or something like that, and you can you know kind of have those type of um, problems other than you know being transformed into a monster or getting addicted <laughs> to becoming a monster. Um, there are a lot of aspects to relate to, like uh, the cheerleader arc, the goth arc the uh, football player, the um, astronomy kid, like yeah. all, rejection, uh, all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, it, it deals with pretty much every high school problem that you can think of. Yeah, I was just thinking like in one episode where a girl felt like she had to change and fit in with this other girls that were doing really bad stuff. And she was like, and Force It was like, oh, well, you don't have to change or be somebody that, you know, to just to fit in. And he's like, you're you're great just on your own. You don't have to change. Be somebody else. And she was like, wow, no one ever said that to me before. So he's like very, like, I don't know. He just helps people a lot. Mm-hmm. I will say this, though. It is hard to get used to. If you came off like more, uh, the more serious um, Kamen Rider shows, Forza's attacks are very different. <laughs> like the switches that he uses, other than, you know, transforming into fire state and electric state and things like that, um, his stuff is very toyetic. Um, his legs, when he calls on the switches, they usually like appear on his right and left leg. Like he'll have a giant drill, he'll have a missile launcher, he'll have a spiky. Uh, like a uh, thing that you use for bread and like a home ec class or something. You know, he gets all kinds of crazy gadgets that appear on his feet. He's usually. Inspector Gadget! Basically, yeah. Yeah, I like his fire outfit because he can actually put out fire as well. That's cool. And he's also immune to fire, like when he wears oh, it. I didn't realize that. Electric mode, what I liked about the electric arc when he got this switch, this was his first transformation, like, or actually they would call it a transformation mode. Um, when he's first using electric, he actually gets electrocuted numerous times. He gets zapped where it hurts him. Yeah. And that's one of the switches that the Breakfast Club is like, maybe we should stop using this gadget. And he's like, no, 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 I'm going to find a way to whatever. And then he finds a way of somehow overusing it. He creates his electric suit, which is another transformation mode for him. Yeah. That way he can, you know, not be affected by that. That's also the ending screen for every episode. It always yeah. says, to be continued. Because they want you to come back. Because usually the episodes are like in an arc, like a two or three episode arc. And yeah. it's continued. So if you miss one, you know, they'll do a little recap at the beginning. But it's always a good idea to never miss an episode. Because it's just really fun to watch. So. Yeah. Definitely. O's is... Uh, an interesting show about like metals and things like that. Every writer has their own quirk, their own um, like uh, way they transform or enemies or something that they have to do. 
you know, and it mm-hmm. changes. That, that's how they keep Common Rider interesting is they always change how stuff goes about, like what the villains are after and things like, ooh, we're going to fight Shadow Moon yeah. eventually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Black's brother. Yeah, I actually f- kind of fell asleep during the O's movie, so I oh, can't it was, remember anything It was two and a half hours, it. and we were watching it at like yeah. 3 or 4 a.m., so. So, yeah, um, I really haven't watched much on O's. I'm going to keep with this duo because, I don't know, there's something about playing as the successor and the original. Yeah, I mean, I could talk about Forza all day, but... I know know there's people that want to see Ryuki because I didn't do very well with him, so we're going to have Ryuki team up with us. I'm just surprised that you put Forza on your uh, second after... uh... After seeing, like, 20 episodes. Oh, here we go. No, there he is again. Gotta do it! Space is awesome! Space. Some translations, it's either blast off, um, space is amazing, space is, it all depends on like the fan sub that you see. I I, yeah. I believe space kita is uh, tr- supposed to be translated as space awesome or space um, amazing, uh, but I'm not sure, so... But that's his catchphrase. Every writer has a catchphrase. This guy you don't really know a lot about. Um, his series is very dramatic. Kamen Rider oh. Fies. Oh, okay, Fies. Or Kamen Rider 55555. His show is very drama-based. Which I'm, I'm surprised that they have Forze listed as a drama. I would yeah. put it as a slice of life He's comedy. Of- yeah. I mean, it does... I mean, the the teenagers have, like, real issues, but they do it in such a, like, a happy way. Like, the show is so happy. Like, you, if you want to smile, you can watch the show. It's like, I wouldn't say it's Teen Titans smiling, but it was, it's very close to that. Like, even the way he cries for people, they does it in a funny way. So it's like, I remember when the, uh, the Jack guy was so sad, and then he was like, he started getting dramatic, and then you saw Force's face, and he has tears, like, all over his face. Yeah. He's like, I feel for you, man! And you start, like, smiling, because it's hilarious. Now, how many common Riders do you know of that have their own robot to assist? That's yeah, what that's that's awesome. robot. It's like, oh, I'm gonna let my robot do my bidding. And Forze is just like, bring it on! Or why aren't we fighting one-on-one? I, okay, I just want to say one more thing about Forze, and then you can talk about the other guys, but um, it just kind of reminds me of, you know how they have, like, all different or in all different types of teenagers from different, like, mm-hmm. cliques, and they all are friends. It reminds me of, like, the feel-good attitude of the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, where they were all... Remember how they were all so different, yet they were all best friends? It was, like, so unrealistic, but so awesome. Like, you wish that would happen in high school, so... Sometimes it does, but usually not like that. Not quite like that. But that's why I wonder if they're gonna mess up on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. They might not understand. That was why it was so cool. Well, they've already changed so much of the new Power Rangers. I mean, I'll give it a shot, Yeah. if it's anything like the new Ghostbusters film, then no thanks. Oh! No! Oh my gosh, no. No, why? I feel like this episode is now tainted from everything is... Well, it's fine. I will never mention that. I'm gonna call that something else, not Ghostbusters. Oh, that's his gold thing. That's pretty awesome. Electric mode. Oh, yeah, electric mode. He has like he if he charge he has like a plug. I mean, it's it's so funny. His uh, weapon has like different plugs on it, and yeah. he gets like a different current or different ability like when he charges it. Right. Like when he puts it in there. I just think the fact that his base is on the moon is the, the coolest thing ever. It's like, and, and I'm almost thinking, how does he get to the moon? You guys are probably thinking the same thing if you're not, if you haven't watched it. It's, it's like, like a Narnia thing. They go through Narnia in a closet or in a locker to get to the moon. It's so cool. It is the coolest thing in the world. I love it. Okay, his super move is kind of cool. You can see my little drill there. But I I also, I mean, get, thinking about the characters and stuff like that, the football player was somebody who, the very first episode you meet him, you are going to hate him. You're going to hate the cheerleaders, you're going to want to vote, you know, and think for the uh, the downtrodden kids, like, you know, the, the geeks and things like that. Yeah. Um, but as the show progresses, you learn kind of like why... The football player and the head cheerleader are like that, and their lives do change because Gentaro comes to their school. 
yeah. and their lives actually changed for the better. They were in like kind of an arranged relationship where the only reason the king and queen were dating is because their parents kind of set it up. They didn't even really know each other that well. It's because they were the most prettiest and popular kids that they felt like they had to do that. And also the amount of pressure that the uh, quarterback had for being a football player when he wanted to do something completely different. Yeah. You know, it's amazing that, like, he can, they can feel for, like, every single person. And I think, like, yeah, even, I don't know, even relating to the mean kids is such a cool thing that they do where, like, he's able to even get to the, he, his superpower is just being able to make friends with everyone, like we said before, like, on other episodes. Is, he even tries to make friends with he, other writers, and they look make, at him like he's strange. He wants to make friends with everyone, because he wants to understand everyone's side of the story, like, and why they are the way they are, and, like, you know, he wants to relate to everyone, and he's such a cool, he's like, where's his heart on his sleeve? He's such a cool guy. And I think his super, like, the first episode, he doesn't really fit into school because it's like he doesn't know. Well, he says when he first is introduced to the class, he says, Hi, my name is Gintaro. He writes it, like, really, really big on the a bulletin, you know, like the chalkboard. Yeah. And usually when a delinquent kid, kid does that, he's trying to issue out a challenge so he can beat up the toughest kid in school. And Gintaro does it to announce himself that he's going to make friends with everybody in the room. Yeah. And then to kind of like ease the tension, you find out that he actually has a childhood friend in the classroom that he hasn't seen for a long time. And that's how they kind of like introduce the viewers like right away to this character. And also this character's always been like that because you give him a little bit of backstory with that uh, girl. I think it's Yuki or Yui. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. The um the as uh, as, uh astronaut girl. Yeah, she likes uh, sci-fi and she's like, obsessed with it. Actually, she's very like nerdy and she loves. I forget if she wants to be an astronaut. Yeah, yes. it's so hilarious when you find out the reason why she because it is kind of like the breast was at breakfast club because they all kind of get in trouble and then they end up having issues and remedial like, studies. Yep. Yeah. So they all end up in the same place and then they're like, well, "Why did you get it in detention?" Since she's so nerdy and she's always reading and stuff. Top grade. And it's like. Oh, you! it's hilarious. I don't know if I should spoil it, why she gets in that, trouble. It's a funny spoiler. It's fine. So the reason why she gets in trouble is because she wants people to know about outer space so much and, and about planets and stars that she brings books that she owns from her house and she puts them in the school library, like donates them without permission. I didn't even know you could get detention for doing that. She puts them in the shelves. I know, it's kind of like... But she's just donating books to the library, but she's like, you you look at her and she's all obsessed with books and, and book about outer space. And she's like, you're looking at the cutscene of where she's getting in trouble and she's like, I need kids to learn. She's like, kids need to learn about... Oh, wait, no. She says, I want everyone to learn about outer space. <laughs> and <laughs> she starts inserting the books into the stack so kids will randomly pick books about outer space. It's like, wow. Which makes so much sense because she always wanted to be an astronaut, which is so cool in the show because she gets to be one. And I related to her character so much because I have always wanted to be an astronaut. I actually almost went to uh like a school that um oh my gosh what school was it oh yeah i almost went to an air force academy actually to be an astronaut because i really wanted to be one but i didn't end up being one sadness (laughs) i could still happen i'd have to like get a i'd uh, yeah go to a lot of school and Mm -hmm. learn to run 10 miles (laughs) it can never happen for me but there's still hope if I meet a common writer, I could go to the moon. There's only one common writer that's on the moon, though. Yeah. Every common writer show, the reason why they've been able to keep going strong for over 40 years is each character appeals to a certain group of people. Like, the series wouldn't be able to keep, like, retransforming itself and connecting itself if it didn't I think you're right. Appeal. I think you're right. I think that. To it someone. Keeps- I think that every couple of years, like it, it really appeals to somebody else. Even there's like a vampire one, and like it, it appeals to so many common writers, always switching it up, so that there's always somebody that's like, oh my gosh, the other common writers I didn't relate to, but this one I really do relate to. Mm-hmm. I mean, you kind of like all of them, but then there's always like one that you really relate to. And there's also common writers that are exclusive to movies as well. Yeah. 
Which sometimes they show up in video games, but not very often. I'm sorry this level's taken a while, guys and gals. I don't know why it's not ending, so I'm hoping that when we go to these things on our map, um, because usually uh, it doesn't take that long. Well, I like talking about Force, so I am having fun. But I, I did not finish watching the O's movie. Are we going to play with O's again? Um, this is his only thing. Okay, it's not that I don't like O's, I just don't, like... I would much prefer to play with characters that I'm familiar with in the beginning, but I'm yeah. open to suggestion in the comments of the characters that I've unlocked. You guys, uh... I think yeah. people really want to see Gaim. <laughs> yeah, I know they do. Gaim. They love those fruity, uh, fruity guys. Yeah, I'm just sorry, okay, on that... Wow, have you, I mean, you guys that like guy and it's like, wow. I saw the <laughs> wow, first eight but... episodes. I heard it gets better. Wow. But after eight episodes, I just couldn't so do it anymore. I've heard about guy is that, that, yeah, that it starts out a little campy and then they make it darker as it goes on or something. Half the cast ends up getting killed off or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so they did the uh, 60s Batman thing where they started it campy and then they tried to Batman get darker. 60s Batman meets Michael Keaton. So then they tried to get darker, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the way... I don't even know what to say. Like, the way that they transform... I cannot believe how serious they are, but they're fruit, so... Yeah. Yeah. All right, so how do I put this? We ran into a glitch where mm, the level never ended. Oh, okay. After you beat certain enemies, the doorways, which are usually, well, they're not really, they're exit ways or whatever. They're covered by like this um, blue kind of like smoke stuff, blue fire. Yeah. It wasn't disappearing. So oh, when that happens, you have to reset. And there are no checkpoints, so the entire level had to be played again. And yeah. So, hopefully, this time it won't happen. So, I apologize because I'm a little annoyed that we started this thing all happy, but replaying levels and, you know. But I will say this um, this company yeah. is doing a great job of not having to do what Koei did with Arslan, having the game jam up when there's to so many enemies and things like that. This game has way too many enemies on the screen at once, but it doesn't freeze up the game. If the most that's going to happen is I just need to restart once in a while to get the game to fix itself, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. Yeah, hopefully the glitch will not happen again. At least I think it was a glitch. Either that or the character just didn't appear. I don't know. It was, I mean, they're usually when you see how they're counting down the enemies we defeated. Yeah. Usually when that happens, the guy who we're supposed to beat, Kamen Rider 555, will appear. And then we'll get to continue the story. Yeah, hopefully we can get through the level this time. Yay! Alright, see, that guy vanished this time. So. Yay! Finally! Let's uh, head to. I miss... See? It vanished! Oh. Yay, good. Oh, yeah, okay, when you're done, yeah, the blue lion thing he's found. Yep, there's Fize, he's talking to us. Oh, right, Fize, yeah, we still need to... You wouldn't like that series. You you like things that are kind of, like, comedic, so you were able to get into Kamen Rider Drive yeah, and, and Wars. And Fours, and, yeah. You might like some aspect of... Fours! Oh. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we're gonna say Fours, I already said. Alright, so they're gonna make us fight two enemies at once. I think I really got into the astronaut episode of Forza because it's always been like a thing I've always wanted to do. I mean, if somebody told me I could pay like a lot of money to go to space right now, I probably well, Common Rider Drive was technically your first show that you watched. So it was my first Common Rider one, yeah. You like Forza better though, pretty sure. I like the romance aspect of uh, Common Rider Drive and yeah, you know the cute. I penis. love Forza. Just makes me smile so much. I just love it. It's. It's so much fun. That's what I would say about it. This isn't really fighting mano y mano. There's, there's two of you now. I think this is called Satellite Attack! Because he looks like a satellite. <laughs> Yay! But he has so much energy. And the great thing about this actor being so young is you know, based on, you know, popularity and things like that, he's going to appear in a lot of Kamen Rider movies. Yeah. He was in the latest Kamen Rider movie that had Black and Drive in it. Although he played a bad guy in it. 
Yeah, I mean, I think the, the thing that makes me like it so much is that, you know, in high school and stuff, everyone wants you to fit in. And the best thing about him is that he does not fit in. Booyah! And that, that so makes him So much for the awesome. robot sidekick. Yeah. No offense, Fours. I know you're a cool-looking rider, but your show is really boring. So you have to die. Just, just have to set this up good. There we go. Sweet. Yay. Cool line. Say something there, Gentaro. Kenny. <laughs> ah, whatever. Gonna, gonna let the Deno's imagination spirits talk. Mission clear. Yay. Space completed. I don't care. It jammed up on me. It's it's fine. Well, it didn't jam up. I mean, it didn't end. Now we'll have to talk about the serious writers and all the other videos. Yeah, I'll have to make you watch. <laughs> as long as you watch the first episode of each of the 45 writers, then wow. you're good. Anyway, guys and gals, that does it for this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you with more Common Rider soon. God bless in every gaming. See ya!